um, good, good, good morning. So yesterday we were looking at the, the need to rely on an authentic, a genuine Mahayana spiritual friend. And the, uh, the, the, the prayers that were being expressed were to meet such a, uh, such a teacher, such a fully qualified teacher, recognize him as such, and rely on him in the appropriate manner. Also, all so that one can um, achieve one's in, uh, heartfelt wish, which is to achieve the state of enlightenment in order to become a Buddha for the sake of all sentient beings. And moreover, the prayers w- were expressed that one doesn't come under the, the, the influence of false teachers or misleading friends, those that can direct one away from the correct views and those that, that steer one towards non-virtuous behavior. So this, in brief, is what we looked at yesterday. So today we um, continue in the text, and the text here um, now brings about prayer that whilst now that, that having come under the care of a uh, Mahayana spiritual teacher, that to fulfill the purpose of this relationship, which is to hear teachings, to reflect or contemplate on those teachings, and then eventually to be able to meditate on these teachings. May we strive with, with great joy and great effort to ensure that we accomplish the final goal. Mm. This is then the eleventh verse. With sail hoisted of the sincerest of minds, driven by winds of unflagging efforts, on this well-built ship of study, reflection, and meditation, may I bring living beings from Samsara's ocean. Mm. This first then presents an, an, an analogy. Um, wanting to cross a vast ocean, one needs to ha- have the r- appropriate conditions, have acquired the r- relevant causes. Um, for one would need a boat, and not just just a vessel that one can sit in, but it would need to have a a large faultless sail, not some raggedy old sail full of holes. And that, that though, um, as sailors would know, is not enough. Uh, one, if one is becalmed on the ocean, one is going nowhere. One needs a strong wind behind one. Tavanashin, 
And In this analogy, then what is the meaning of the, the boat, of the sail, and of the wind? The boat, then, is the practices of, of um, study, reflection, and meditation, or hearing teachings, contemplating them, and meditating on them. So that is the vessel that is required to cross this vast ocean. And in order to be able to have the sufficient power to cross the ocean, a sail is required. And the sail, <coughs> the sail represents the motivation. And the motivation we have in the verse expressed as the sincerest of minds. So this is the same Tibetan term that was translated in our first verse as the purest of minds. And it refers to, and, and, it, and it is literally the altruistic mind, or the mind of bodhicitta. So the motivation that is required to drive this, this, um, this boat across, across the ocean is the, the mind of bodhicitta, this wish to arise as a, a, as a Buddha, to achieve the state of enlightenment in order to be able to guide all sentient beings in the development of those same minds within themselves and achieve, achieve the state of Buddhahood themselves as well. So the sail then is the mind of bodhicitta. And for, this to, for the, the sail to be able to, to take the ship across, or the boat across the ocean uh, quickly, wind is required. And the wind here represents the mind of joyous perseverance, a mind that takes delight in engaging in virtue, not sporadically, but repeatedly over a sustained period. So with the absence of laziness, with laziness overcome, with a mind that takes delight in the pursuit of virtue, then one strives for this to accomplish the goals of liberation and enlightenment. So that is the meaning of the prayer that is being expressed in this 11th verse. Mm, Nyamlinchi Di Kunu Looking at uh, the first line here, with sail hoisted of the sincerest of minds. 
So this then refer, refers um, with the sail that's being hoisted, we mentioned is the motivation. And then the sincerest of minds, uh, the sail is what represents the motivation, and the motivation is the sincerest of minds. And the usual translation, the less poetic translation, would be the mind of altruism or the mind of bodhicitta. And so th here we are being encouraged, right at the outset of this verse, to be aware of our motivation to establish this motivation at the outset of whatever practice we engage in because it is that motivation which will determine the, the, um, the, the karmic result that will follow from whatever virtuous act action we engage in. So if one engages in any uh, virtuous action, whether it is, say, uh, generosity or ethical conduct or patience, etc., if one engages in um, that action, with a motivation to ensure that one doesn't fall into the lower realms, but attains a good rebirth, then that action will lead to the accumulation of a cause that leads merely to a good rebirth in the future life. But if one engages in that same action, again, whether it's ethical conduct or, or, or uh, generosity, patience, choice, perseverance, concentration, or wisdom, any virtuous contact, conduct, but does so with a motivation having seen that cyclic existence is pervaded by suffering and there's no uh, uh, peace or happiness worthy of striving for within samsara because nothing is stable or lasting. And with, that, with this motivation of wanting to achieve liberation from suffering, one engages in that self-same action, it creates the cause for liberation from suffering. But again, if one has generated the actual motivation that is expressed here by the sincerest of minds, that motivation of bodhicitta, if one has generated this motivation, then that self-same action, motivated now by a very different mind, leads to the great, great result of the attainment of enlightenment. Hence, right at the outset of this verse then, one is, is one's um, attention is drawn to the need to cultivate the appropriate motivation. And the appropriate mo motivation is the mind of uh, the altruistic mind, this mind that's, that sees firstly that on, this, on a, on a, a level, level of great meaning or in a si significant way, we cannot point to a difference between ourselves and others, ignoring the differences that are superficial in, in, the, in, in a deep way. There is no difference between ourselves and any other being in that we all have the same innermost wish of happiness and to avoid suffering. Whatever we observe in the world is motivated by this wish for happiness. So, seeing, so using this then as a basis, we could generate minds of love and compassion and special intention and bodhicitta. So that is the sincerest of motivations or sincerest of minds which is symbolized in the analogy by the sail which is hoisted. ดีเนี่ยดาดาสมเจตนะทําเจดุงาดาจ้าโกดูสัมปาดาสมเจตนะทําเจดีวาดาเดมบาร์โชสัมปาดาสมเจตนะทําเจดีวาดาเดมบา
这是他的意见了,比如说说是意见了,比如说说是意见了,比如说说是意见了,比如说说是意见了,比如说说是意见了,比如说说是意见了,比如说说是意见了,比如说说是意见了,比如说说是意见了,比如说说是意见了,比如
the antidote to that, the wisdom realizing ent- emptiness. And by identifying, this means not merely to understand intellectually, but to understand in a way that transforms our way of thinking, transforms our mind. Because it's only when we see this with a clarity, with a vividness, that we will be able to transform our way of thinking. And then at that point, having identified the causes of suffering and the solution to that, we have su- the f- sufficient um, intellectual basis to give rise to the strength of compassion, where we, buy, we generate the altruistic attitude, I take responsibility to become the great, greatest of guides, a Buddha, so that I have the skill and the ability to help all sentient beings identify for themselves the causes of their suffering, and thereby the causes of suffering that all beings experience, as well as in the solution to that, the wisdom realizing emptiness. I take this as my responsibility. And this then is the mind of of special intention. And likewise, with the mind mind of love, coming to understand that, that happiness comes through cultivating causes, comes from cultivating merit. So therefore, I need to cultivate merit, and I need to be able to guide others in how to do so, through engaging in practices such as ethical conduct, generosity, patience, and so forth. I need to do this myself, and I need to do this so as to arise as a Buddha and enable all beings to develop the causes for lasting, stable happiness. Whether beings abide in happiness or in suffering, this is my responsibility. So this is the mind, this is the mind of altruism, the mind of special intention. And it is this mind of taking individual responsibility for the welfare of each and every sense of being without exception that gives power, sufficient power to love and compassion to completely change our world, to completely change how we relate to others and our environment. So this is what is meant by the sincerest of attitudes. This is the sail that is of, of, of motivation that is required to drive the, the ship across the ocean. Ta ya Looking then at our, our second line, driven by winds of unflagging effort. So here, from the first line, we have generated then the mind of special intention and bodhicitta. So here, one has taken on this responsibility to be of benefit to others. The minds of love and compassion were mere aspirations. Sincere as they may be, they remain at aspiration. But when special intention and then bodhicitta have arisen, here, the, the practitioner has committed to strive for the welfare of others. And in order for this aspiration then to fulfill th- its goal, 
then one has to make great effort over a protracted period. And this is what is referred to in, in the second line. The Sorry, there's some fee feedback or something. Okay. Ah, okay. There we go. <laughs> So, so for for the goals, the goal of bodhicitta, the objective of body cheetah to be fulfilled, great effort of a sustained period is required. So this is we are often expressed in the, my teachings as repeatedly over a sustained period, and that is what the second line is referring to. One has to abandon laziness in all its forms. The laziness that manifests as, oh, this is important, but so is this, this, and this. So the main goal can wait until tomorrow. I need to first take care of this and that. This, dece this deceitful mind of procrastination that saps us of time and energy, this we need to identify and abandon. And moreover, e efforts and energy need to be uh, 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 applied, not sporadically, but repeatedly over a sustained period. If one gives rise to, to um, um, aspiration to uh, live a meaningful life and transform one's way of thinking whilst receiving teachings, if one just leaves us at that, then one has only received uh, a virtuous imprints. But one's mind doesn't change. One needs to then engage in the meditation sessions. And if one is feeling change coming to one's mind in the meditation sessions, this is fabulous. But if it's just left at the retreat, then change will not come. One needs to continue at home. And if one does so at home next week and the week after, this is, again, it's, it's fabulous. This is the intention. But if that, then that peters out because life is busy and there are many demands on one, the change that one aspires to will not be achieved. So therefore, just like for a, a boat to cross a vast ocean, the wind needs to be continuous. It can't be sporadic, and moreover, the wind needs to have sufficient strength, not just a mere breeze. Likewise, we need to practice repeatedly over a sustained period. Lungi <laughs> Dire Tebe
Dinigi Tonyle in this in this analogy there we've, we've mentioned three components the the boat the sail and the wind all three are required because if one w only has the two we've spoken about this this motivation of, of bodhicitta which is the sail which is then propelled by the uh, the winds of joy's perseverance if that's all we have the sail is just going to be a big wet cloth in the ocean and is going to cross the, 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 this ocean very, very slowly, despite there being such a motivation uh, with joyous perseverance. So the boat is required too. And the boat rep represents um, study or hearing, reflection or contemplation and meditation. And that's what we see in the third line, on this well-built ship of, of hearing, contemplation and meditation. So why is this so essential? Because even having generated bodhicitta most, as, as, and, and, and it's been conjoined with the mind of joyous perseverance, the strength of the bodhicitta as well as the mind of joyous perseverance both need to continue to grow so as to eventually uh, uh, the, the being, the practitioner, can arise as a Buddha. So therefore, even once having generated bodhicitta, the practices of hearing, reflection and meditation need to be continued. So these are practices not just for us, but for bodhisattvas as well. And then why is, why is this the case? So all of you here will appreciate the importance of, of meditation. But for meditation to actually lead to anything, <laughs> one has to meditate on something. Others, what is one meditating on? What is one thinking about? And, and for, again, for meditation to be effective, then uh, one needs to understand the topic well, not just merely know the name of the topic or have a vague understanding of the topic, because then only a vague result will come of thinking about it. The more one knows, the more one understands, the far greater the result will come from one's meditation. So therefore, one has to continuously hear teachings, study these teachings. This is a continuous requirement. 
whether one has attained the parts of a bodhisattva or aspires to these parts. One has to continuously hear teachings and in this way gather knowledge, come to understand the topic in ever greater detail. And in this, this, um, the, this, this stage of he, or this part of hearing and studying, this too needs to be conjoined with the mind of joyous perseverance because the obstacles such as laziness need to be overcome. The ob- obstacles such as procrastination need to be overcome. So hearing too needs to be conjoined with joyous perseverance. And then the second step is that of reflection or contemplation. So just to say as an aside, in English we would generally call this reflection, uh, call this meditation. But here in the top, the, the context of, of hearing, reflecting and meditating, different term. So here, this uh, conjoined or, or accompanying hearing, one needs to reflect on the teachings. And why is that? Because one needs to give rise to a valid cognizer, a mind that is, has a, an unmistaken understanding of the topic that one is hearing teachings on and, and studying. So to achieve this, merely hearing alone is insufficient. One has to think about the teachings. The literal word here is think. But it, the, the more appropriate contemplation is to reflect or contemplate. So think about the meaning of these teachings. So if one is receiving teachings on the topic of impermanence, the topic of bodhicitta, the topic of emptiness, one needs to gather the knowledge through hearing and studying and through reflection. One needs to come to an ever greater understanding. And to come to a, the, a, a strength of uh, understanding or realization where one actually gives, um, uh, generates a valid cognizer in relation to the topic, this doesn't come about quickly. It requires repeated effort of a sustained period. And that, with that, on the basis of hearing, one reflects repeatedly over a sustained period, one can give rise to a valid cognition. But it, that is the, and that is the only way to give rise to a valid cognition. Through hearing and reflecting repeatedly over a sustained period, conjoined with joyous perseverance. Because jo- joyous perseverance not only serves to ensure that we overcome obstacles of laziness, such as procrastination or a, um, a distraction to, to, uh, to the wide variety of activities that keep us so busy, but joyous perseverance also serves to ensure that we repeatedly, over a sustained period, receive teachings and reflect on these teachings. Then, having given rise to a valid cognizer on the topic, and this valid cognizer that comes about in dependence on hearing and reflection, then, powered by our motivation of bodhicitta, we will not leave it at that. We will not say, oh, I know it well, it has had a powerful impact on my mind, that is sufficient. Rather, the motivation of bodhicitta, this wish to attain enlightenment for the sake of others, will push us further until we achieve enlightenment. And this is when we are ready to embark on meditation, what, me- what is actually meant by meditation here. And that is to, to meditate on what we have, the topic we have been studying and reflecting on with the union of calm abiding and meditative insight. That then is meditation. Meditation is the um, the uh, meditation is is stronger than uh, uh, stronger than reflection in that it is con- it is performed with a union of calm abiding and meditative insight. Then this valid cognizer that was achieved through through a reflection based on on hearing, this then becomes powerful enough to eventually attain enlightenment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
这个是我们的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学校的学
and then apply this process. So we need then to make great effort ourselves and we need to, as we gain experience, understand that this is the same process that others need to go through. So therefore, I need to develop myself so that I can guide others in the same way that I'm being guided. Lasan <laughs> ยามเนจีเจอันสัญญาคือสัมเจตทําเจดินิยามเนจีเนสัญญาคือบ่ทอบรอชอเซซอซอรานาอีเนอันนะภาษาหนัมบาตาเบกิกวนเนจันชูส
and this verse, Lama Tsongkhapa, is talking from his own experience that he generated the minds of love and compassion, wanting all beings to be freed of, of, of suffering and to abide in lasting happiness. And he didn't leave it at the mere aspiration that is the minds of love and compassion, no matter how powerful these are, he took responsibility for the welfare of others, which is the giving rise of the mind or special intention. And this then was delivered, uh, developed to from, may I free all sentient beings from suffering, to the mind or body cheetah which encompasses, and therefore uh, to do this, I will become a Buddha. Giving rise to body cheetah like this, he continued to, to receive teachings, to reflect and to meditate on these, these teachings. And so in this verse, he is explicitly encouraging us to do this. Because if we combine the um, a sturdy ship together with a, a large sail that is, um, that is always powered by wind, that is never becalmed, then we can be certain we'll quickly cross the ocean of suffering and attain enlightenment for the sake of others. But if any of those are missing, then the process is very slow. All three are required in order to be able to accumulate the, the causes to achieve the result. So one needs to, firstly in one's meditation, give rise to this wish to be liberated from suffering. And we've looked at that meditation in detail, but this is the, the, uh, we need to give rise to this wish to be liberated from, from suffering. And then take everything that we have come to understand in that meditation and apply it to others. Because they are in the same position, wanting to be freed of suffering, but suffering continuously whilst being trapped in cyclic existence due to the cause of their afflicted minds, in particular that of the ignorance of self-grasping. No difference between ourselves and others. And seeing no difference between self and others, we engage in the cultivation of bodhicitta through uh, perhaps the six causes and one effect method. In giving rise to the mind of bodhicitta, then it will be ever clearer to us that to become a Buddha for the sake of others, I need to develop the knowledge of a Buddha, and this is only done through continuously re receiving teachings, reflecting and meditating on these teachings. And with this understanding, our choice perseverance too is strengthened. And if we do this, then our meditation, we will see rapid change. Because for change to come, we require knowledge, and we need to accumulate knowledge repeatedly over a sustained period. And we can't leave this though as mere, mere hearing. We need to repeatedly over a sustained period reflect on that. And in this way, we take this knowledge and we integrate it into our mind. We change our mind into a mind of the, of the Dharma. And in this way, we rapidly progress to Buddhahood. And very quickly, we'll see a change in our way of relating to others and the impact we have on others. Just to emphasize this point, all three of the components that are being mentioned in this verse are required. One, um, one requires this motivation of bodhicitta, which is based on study, reflection, and meditating, and it is powered by our, um, the mind of choice perseverance. And to, to give rise to uh, bodhicitta and joyous perseverance, 
one needs to study, reflect and meditate to power, uh, continuously power bodhicitta until enlightenment is achieved, study, reflect and meditate. So all three, study, reflection, meditation, bodhicitta, joys, perseverance are required. And if we make great effort in this, then we can be sure of progressing on the path and we will experience change within ourselves. And we will experience the way we relate to others as changing, the way we deal with difficulties in life as changing. So all three of these are required to bring that about. ตะกิซีงานจุกิชันละยาจิกเชเจดินิกิเชมาชินเวเนซอสุกิดากางตุกจุเซติญัมเนเชเวเนอามีชันดากิโอตังานจุเลยงานโอคุนเปียยาโอ
because of the change in our minds. So our first teaching to others would be our mere presence, just through our inner development. And then, because of the inner development, we will not just be calm and peaceful when we are with others, even in difficult circumstances, but the way that we relate to others will be transformed. And this will be expressed in a willingness and a skill in physically being there for others, helping others uh, in, in a physical manner. It will be expressed in our way of verbally communicating with others. So in this way, we will bring great benefit to others. And they will experience this benefit and will reciprocate it through appreciation, through joy in our presence, etc. So in this way, we will have a direct impact on others and they will appreciate what we are, are doing for them. They will appreciate the change that we have cultivated in ourselves. So in these ways, we will be able to be of great benefit to others. We may not be teaching them the Dharma, but we will be helping them in other ways. We will be speaking to them in a kind way, perhaps giving them advice which is relevant in their lives. In this, in many ways, you will be able to bring benefit to others. And when doing this, be aware of the impact you're having on others. Generate joy within yourself about the, the, um, the results that you have achieved through your own efforts. Generate joy within yourself about your own spiritual development. Generate joy within yourself about the benefit you are bringing into the lives of others. And make strong aspirational prayers that through this virtuous connection that you are creating with beings, through this may you continue to help them in ever more meaningful, life, in meaningful ways, life after life. And, may, and secondly, generate the, the heartfelt aspiration that may opportunities like these and others come my way where I can create connection with others and use this connection in ever more beneficial ways in this and all future lives. Mm-hmm. And this brings us to the, fo- the fourth verse. As much as I excel in learning, as much as I give to others, as pure as my morality grows, as much as I become wise, by, by as much may I be empty of pride. The, the meaning of this verse is that 
we're certainly being encouraged here to, to um, in the previous verse, to engage in the practi- uh, practices of hearing, reflecting, and meditating. And if w- one does so, then you can be sure that through uh, hearing teachings and reflecting on them, then if one does this repeatedly over a sustained period, change will come. And this change then will come in that, uh, as we see in the first line, our, uh, our knowledge grows ever uh, broader. And, um, and moreover, our virtuous practices, such as generosity, and we can understand this in the terms of uh, the wish to give, the wish to be of benefit, grows ever greater and, and more powerful within us. And thirdly, our, our ethics, these are also transformed. Our ethical way of thinking, meaning the way that we act, the way that we physically act, the way that we speak, our way our, of thinking becomes subdued and changed. And then our wisdom will, through all of this, our wisdom will be growing in, in that our analytical development of the various topics of the Dharma that comes through greater knowledge, that has led to um, a, a greater wish to be of benefit to others, and has led to our, our, our ever greater um, ethical conduct, as well as our understanding of reality. These all will grow. These are then the, the results of hearing teachings and reflecting on them. At this point, though, there is, of course, the danger of pride arising within ourselves. And because we, we will see that what once was unknown to us is now known. What once others knew but we didn't, we now know. And we may well know more than many others, especially those who are not, who have not been enga- engaging so much reflect, uh, study and, and re- hearing of teachings and study on the teachings. And likewise, through our, um, the, the development of our inner, other inner good qualities, such as the, the wish to help, the mind of generosity, and, and um, our pure ethical conduct, then we may start to, to, to look down on others and see, oh, I'm someone special. I have followed the advice of the teachers. I have received many teachings, reflected on them, and I see change in myself, both in knowledge as well as the way I relate with others. And then it's very easy to see oneself in this puffed up way, see oneself as superior. And this pride then gets expressed through looking down on others, seeing the faults of others. This then, of course, is contrary to the minds we are trying to generate. This just leads to an ever greater grasping at um, the qualities in our own continuum. This is contrary to the wish of liberation. And of course, it's contrary to the wish to bring benefit to others. So here the prayer that is being expressed, as much as I spiritually progress, by as much may my, my pride reduce. Mm. <laughs> Kasashiba Tinchimoza <laughs> Dead Tenekia 
ที่นี่เกอันนี้ส่วนที่สัมปันธ์เนี่ยที่นี่เกี่ยมเรื่องเชียร์เดลิดาเกี่ยมเรื่องเชียร์อะไรอันนี้เทวะเทวะชิมิ
can only be realized if beings accumulate the causes of happiness. They practice um, ethics, they develop a mind of wanting to help. So the mind of ethics is the mind not wanting to harm. The mind of generosity is the mind of wanting to help, being patient and so forth. That is how beings accumulate the causes for happiness. And so here we give rise to the wish, this is my responsibility to ensure that beings do this. The vast majority of beings have n- do not know how to identify the causes of happiness. It is my responsibility then, because I know how, th- how to do this, it's my responsibility to guide them to achieve this. The companion mind, that of compassion. When you think about this more deeply, how do beings become freed of suffering? This is through <coughs> um, identifying the causes of suffering, the afflicted minds, which all come from the ignorance of self-grasping, and then developing the antidote to that, the direct antidote of the wisdom realizing emptiness. So we, through our hearing and our reflecting, we have come to understand this, and we have some uh, uh, some, uh, realization of this. And here, this mind of compassion then leads us to take responsibility for, for others, in that we have understood the sequence that leads to suffering, as well as the sequence that leads to liberation from suffering. Others are not in this position, they do not have this knowledge, and moreover they don't know how to train in this. I have this, I take responsibility to impart this to others. So here we give rise to the mind of special intention, this mind of taking responsibility for others. Then how to actualize this? Because now we have given wish to a a, a sincere, um, we've given rise to a sincere wish to actually be of benefit to others. But the reality is we don't have the skill. One, we lack knowledge. Two, we lack realization. And three, we we lack the skill to be able to impart this to others in a way they can receive it. To overcome all three of these, we need to become the most skilled of guides, a Buddha, a Buddha who, a being who has perfected all good qualities and completely eliminated all faults. And this is the rise of the mind of, of bodhicitta, where we commit to striving to become a Buddha for the sake of others. And this brings us to the fourth point of the meditation, the um, the practices that a bodhisattva engages in, the six perfections. So we've spoken briefly about these, so I'll just mention now the the mind we've spoken about today, that of joyous perseverance. So here, we cultivate the mind of joyous perseverance through recognizing the need to continue to hear teachings and reflect on those teachings and meditate on these teachings. We need to continuously hear teachings of the Mahayana Dhamma and then reflect and meditate on them so as they arise within us. And we need to do so not sporadically, but repeatedly over a sustained period. And in order to do so, we need to be aware of the, 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 the mind of laziness that leads us to prioritizing in, in an incorrect manner that leads us to being drawn to worldly activities, that leads us to procrastination. So this is how we can uh, uh, generate the mind of joyous perseverance, so as to overcome laziness. And then the last, the last point to make, was, so that would have been the, f- the, the fourth, then the fifth would be aspirational prayers. So here we have new verses, two new verses, that we can use for aspirational prayers, in particular in the, the twelfth one we've just looked at to be aware, always be aware of the potential for pride to arise within us as we develop spiritually. And the way we can be aware of the arisal of pride is it manifests in looking down on others, in in criticizing others. And these are minds that are contrary to both the attainment of liberation, because they strengthen our self-grasping, and it's contrary to the mind of bodhicitta. So therefore we generate the aspiration here, in the fifth step, to always be aware of pride and not come under its influence. Sure, 
Çok şey, çok şey. Çok şey esinde, cigi cigi reyse açıyor, çok şey esinde. Çok şey çünkü bindi. Çok şey esinde, ne kadar kumu gelme, o da kadar cigi reyse dedi, dilema kumu reyse açıyor. Cizden çünkü o da kadar sarma, o niyense dedi, cigi reyse besem ne diye mi çok şey cigi, çok şey esiyor. Da yapın, yarımcı sonuçta sarıncı o da, ne kadar sarı şüysen, da şu mi esinde, ki şüysen esinde çok şey çevası var. Dini ki çok şey maçı maçı. Da kaçı kokup şüye kokup da kaçı şüye lan, şu gün sen bir şu tuba şu esin bir manam diye var diye. Kocam tuçe. So this, um, this afternoon we'll continue in here, and the, the verses then go on to now having um, have rely, uh, come to meet in Mahayana Dharma and given rise to the wish to study and reflect and meditate on, on the Mahayana Dharma, then we need to do so without coming under the, the influence of minds such as procrastination and, and laziness. Okay. Um, so just before we conclude, if you have some questions, then please do ask. <laughs>